module is about data entry and editing and the learning objectives if, of this module are about learning about map types of map and about map scale then explaining map digitization um, and what are the digitization errors and how they can be prevented then how coordinate transformations are performed and what is their purpose and lastly listing and explaining the types of vector feature classes in um, GIS and in particular ArcMap. So let's talk about the geographic maps and map components first. A map is a representation showing information about physical features of a geographic area. So if we look at this example map, this is showing the boundary um, land boundary of North American continent and there are some things that a map should have um, first of all a purpose which means it is shown by the title and of course the author is the person who prepared this map so the author's name should always be there um, the second aspect of a map is clarity and that is reflected by a couple of things that should be there First of all, it should have a clear border defining the edge of the map. Um, then it should also have um, um, a north arrow showing which way um, is the north direction. Then it should have um, a legend which shows the colors and lines and their explanation. Um, and then beside that there should there are some additional pieces of information that are not necessary but if they are there they would be helpful so first of all uh, and they are related to uh, the ability to locate points on the map um, the first one is graticule which means um, providing latitude and longitude grid lines um, and if they are just regular grid lines they're called grid if they are lat long they're called graticule just a terminology then in what projection this map was transferred onto a flat surface and then a scale bar which is um, which tells us um, how do the distance on the map translates to distance on the ground so uh, in in your f lab one you, ha you uh, lab two you learn how to create a map and how to add these important pieces of information about the map on uh, a printout. Then there are many types of map that you will come across and uh, th there is no uh, general classification of this map but I have grouped them into three types. Uh, you can group them by component uh, by their contents, you can group them by their utility um, or how the information is presented on them and let's go through them uh, one by one. So if we were looking at the contents we have a, a wide range of maps because the contents on the maps are so varied uh, but some of the things that most common things that you will see are a physical map a physical map is that basically tells the physics about the physical surface of uh, the ground so in this case uh, the physical map is showing uh, rivers mountains um, and, and land and ocean uh, the other type of map is climate map and this tells us about climate on the surface so for example a temperature map um, other map would be maps would be rainfall map or humidity map um, another content is political map and this basically tells us about boundaries um, country boundaries state boundaries county boundaries um, anything that has to deal with the uh, political aspects of the ground um, is a political map. Um, another one is demographic map and this tells us about people on the ground. So if we create a map, in this case an income map um, of various uh, counties of the, uh, of the United States, then it's uh, a demographic map. And there's many other maps and you should um, try to familiarize yourself with these types of maps. The other classification is based on utility. So there are general reference maps um, that are, are come handy when we are trying to find information about the surface. First one is called a base map and this is a map that uh, can be a satellite image or a, map, a historical map and it's put as a background 
uh, behind some some features so in this case we are showing roads but we put an image in the background and that would be called a base map um, another type is resource map that tells us some resources on the ground for example in this case we have a solar energy map then we have navigation maps that provides directions or route from one point to the other um, so the google map that everybody uses now to go around the city is would be a navigation map Another type is directory map, which tells us the locations of different um, uh, different um, points of interest on the ground. So, for example, you have used this map many times. This is the UNLV building directory map. So it tells what building is located at what spatial point. Then we can show the other, other utility of geographic maps is to show variation. One is to change to show change. Here is a map of Las Vegas, um, present and before, and it shows change in the urban footprint. Here is a map um, of uh, flow. So another thing we can show is flow, and this shows the flow of air over the U.S. Uh, and shows how air moves on 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 the on the surface of the country. Another variation is movement of things on the surface. So here is an airline map and showing different airline routes um, and how things move from one. If we were looking at a migratory pattern of birds, that would be a movement map as well. Uh, and there are other utilities by access, for example, classified map, private map, public map, educational map. All of these are based upon how we are using the map. Lastly, by presentation, and this is actually of more interest from the GIS point of view. Um, the first classification that you have already seen in your um, lab as well as module, previous module is um, by spatial data model that we use. So we can use vector model, uh, vector model or a raster model, and that those are the two models we have covered. But there's another model called a TIN, which is um, uh, triangulated irregular network and this um, is another way of showing elevations on the ground surface um, then we can also categorize by the theme also called thematic maps and there are four types that we will talk about first one is proportional symbols and you have done this in your uh, in your lab where you change the size of the of a symbol to reflect the uh, population in that state or, or in that city. Um, in this case, these circles, the size of the circle represents how many Walmarts are there in different states. The other type of a thematic map is choroplath. And in choroplath, instead of using proportional symbols, we are actually using colors. So different colors represent different value of the attributes. So in this case, um, is the unemployment rate by states and the colors represent which state has lesser um, uh, more um, the darker has more unemployment and as the color becomes light um, the unemployment reduces so choroplath uses colors then isoplath is the third kind of thematic map and it uses um, lines that represent same attribute value. So a contour map is an example of isoplath, and the lines represent the points with the same elevation. But you have also come across iso heights where the lines represent the value of the same rainfall. Um, so isoplath is the general category or general class of such maps. The last thematic map is dot density, and in this case, we reflect the value of the attribute by density of dots. So in, for example, in case of population density, the more dots represent larger population density and lesser dots represent lesser population density. Um, the other type of presentation is scale. So we have small scale maps and large scale maps and small scale maps have uh, uh, lesser detail and large scale maps have more detail they're kind of zoomed in versions um, and then another uh, type of presentation is what media is used to present the map 
for example, paper or um, digital media, 3D uh, media. Uh, in case of our present-day navigation systems, we have audio media also telling us about the map and even interactive maps where you can interact with the map to, for example, find a coffee uh, shop close to you. So that covers the classification of geographical maps. And next, let's talk about the scale. Um, a scale of a map is a relationship between the distance on the map and corresponding distance on the ground. It is often shown as a ratio um, on the map, um, as a ratio like 1 to 50,000, or a scale bar where um, the unit on the scale means something on the ground. So in this case, one unit means one mile. If you see a scale bar, uh, if you see a scale description, um, that means it's one millimeter on the ground is equal to 50,000 millimeters on the surface. Um, for example, if we had a map of one to 100,000, then one centimeter on map equals 100,000 centimeters on ground, which is one kilometer on the ground. So if we were to measure distance between point A and B, we will put our scale here, a ruler, and measure the distance. So 4.82 centimeters multiplied by 50,000 will give us the number of centimeters on the ground. If we were to follow A to B over this forest road, then we will have to use what we call adjustable divider. We set its width to match the scale and then we find out how many of these widths um, traverse this path. Um, you may have seen it. You, you run it, you run this divider along this path and find out the total number of um, units found and that's the number of miles of this road. Now often there is a confusion between what is a large-scale map and what is a small-scale map and um, I like to think of it as large means larger amount of detail and small means small amount of detail. But there's another way to look at it as well by looking at the scale itself. Let's say we had 1 to 1,000 scale map and 1 to 100,000 scale map. So this is a ratio which means it's 1 over 1,000 which is 0 0.001 and this scale is 1 over 100,000 which is 0.00001. So now we compare these numbers which are the scale values and clearly 0 0.001 is a larger number so comparatively 1 to 1000 scale is a large scale map and the other one is a small scale map. Another feature of uh, maps is map generalization and this is an, an approximation introduced in uh, real features when they are presented on a map. Of course, we cannot present everything. Maps are a re representation and they have uh, approximations in them and errors in them. So the approximation that we have are fusing, simplifying, displacing, omitting, and exaggerating. And this figure kind of describes what they are. So if this was our true surface, then fusing means we take some of these uh, components and merge them together as a big component and we have fused them because of our inability to represent all of them individually we fuse them into a sim single uh, feature um, in case of simplified um, we simplify the lines of the features for example these polygons have much more detail of their boundary but we, s we can simplify them if we are unable to show all of those variations in the boundary so that would be simplification. Um, sometimes it is difficult to show some features together, so we displace um, them so that for the clarity purposes. So for example, in this case, the road is displaced um, a little bit for clarity. Omission means we cannot represent certain features, so we just omit them. In this case, we these three features are just omitted because of inability to present them on the map. An exaggeration is when a certain feature is um, in, increased in size for clarity. So roads are often not, the width of the road is not represented exactly. They are usually exaggerated um, on the maps. 
Um, here is an example that where we um, have a, um, uh, a small scale map and we increase its um, um, we have a large scale map and we we we, we uh, uh, reduce its scale and make it a small scale map here and what we see is um, all of these things are happening so some of these features are merged to fuse into a larger feature here are some exaggerations where the road size is increased to show clarity here is a mission this piece of road is omitted because it can be shown um, here is some simplification where this line is kind of shown with lesser points than all the detail it has um, here's another example of displacement that you commonly see for the uh, American continent where Alaska and Hawaii are displaced to show just below the, the US um, so th these map generalizations are common and they're used to to, to show approximations and uh, improve the clarity of a map.